much, everybody. Well, boy, am I glad to be back. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. I missed all of you. And I sh I'm ready to play another virtual concert. Hopefully, tonight's will go off without any problems. If you have not seen my posts on Facebook, I, I know I have a lot of regular listeners online, and uh, I have what I believe to be very good news. I had an internet technician over at the house this week, and he found a bad splitter in the crawl space beneath my house. So theoretically, my internet issues should be fixed now, and hopefully uh, it won't cut out in the middle of my songs while I'm streaming tonight. Uh, again, this is theoretical, but this was a professional internet technician who sounded uh, very confident that he had fixed the problem. In fact, I'm very glad that at least he was able to see the problem uh, with his equipment when he first got here. But anyway, that's good news for tonight and the concert that I have prepared, which is a night of novelty piano. I was going to do this a few weeks ago, and I thought it's, I just need to redo it. And the novelty piano is something that kind of followed ragtime in the 1920s. One of the very earliest examples would be uh, Nola by Felix Arndt, and then of course uh, by about 1921, Zez Confrey had become the king of novelty piano writers. And of course I'll play some of his music for you tonight. I thought I'd start with Roy Bargy, however. That was his popular piece, Piano Flage, from 1922. And uh, then I'll tell you what's next. Looks like everything's working. This is great news. I'm checking YouTube now. Okay, looks like we're good. Um, well, now, novelty piano is something that was usually composed and performed by classically trained pianists. Uh, some of it was very techni technically demanding, like the Roy Bardi pieces. Uh, here's one that's not. Some of them were kind of lighthearted, and, uh, you know, the, the definition of novelty piano is, is as simple as the word itself. They were, they were new and novel. So here's one that was a big hit for a composer named John S. Zemischnik. I believe that's how you pronounce it. He wrote a lot of silent movie music, and then he had this big hit, which is a piano solo from 1926 called Polly. <laughs>
And there's Polly. Thank you so much. Yes, it does sound like something that would accompany a silent movie. In fact, I just got done doing a silent film program here in Durango this afternoon. I wish many of you lived closer. But I guess that's why I've got to keep doing the virtual concerts, because, you know, there's, there's a lot of great fans of rag, ragtime and early American music, but they all live in different parts of the country, and they're so spread out. Applauding, but you can't see. I really appreciate that. It is still bizarre to bow to my cell phone. I'm just checking the streams. Hey, oh, David, thank you. Thank you for the tip. Um, let me play another piece of music for you. This is another challenging Roy Bargy novelty piano solo. Bargy wrote these early on in his career uh, in the early 20s. And around that time, he joined Isham Jones Orchestra. And then later, he played with Paul Whiteman's orchestra. So he was really one of the top pianists in the country in the 1920s. And here's one that he wrote with Charlie Strait. Now, Charlie Strait was another popular player piano roll artist and uh, is probably one of the people that deserves credit for helping invent the novelty piano style, in addition to Felix Arndt and, and Zez Confrey. And so uh, this is a collaboration between the two. May have been mostly written by Charlie Strait, actually, and it's called Rough and Ready.
That's rough and ready, spelled R-U-F-E-N-E-D-D-Y. Yeah, that's right. Rough and ready. Oh, uh, hello there to uh, the Riley family in New Hampshire. It was so nice to meet you. I'll email you again very soon. I'm sorry I haven't had time to do that. Well, it looks like we've got good numbers here on uh, Facebook, and if you enjoy this music, please share the stream, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. And I took a chance tonight, and I'm even streaming on Twitch. Uh, my, my streaming app allows me to do that, and I thought since the internet is supposed to be fixed, I'd take a chance with it and see if I can develop some followers on Twitch. I'd, I'd appreciate that. And I do accept virtual tips for these concerts, by the way. Uh, if you're so inclined, there's, there's uh, PayPal and Venmo information on the screen uh, on each of the websites. I, I appreciate that. It, it allows me to, to help keep playing this music, keep it alive, and try to make a career out of it anyway. Um, now let's do a little bit slower style novelty piece. And here's the original copy of the sheet music from 1927, composed by the brilliant Lee Sims who was very popular throughout the 1920s and into the 1930s. Uh, that's a, a sort of Art Deco style picture of him. This is probably his most popular composition from 1927, I maybe I already said that, and it's called Meditation. Uh, Lee Sims music is, is harmonically very uh, clever and he was uh, known for writing piano solo arrangements of pop songs during that period. You would see in the sheet music, Lee Sims' piano solo chorus. He was well known for that. I've used, oh, two or three of them in my performances. Billy Merrill did similar things in England where he would create uh, piano arrangements of pop songs, but um, they were very popular. Anyway, here is Meditation. I don't need the sheet music, except maybe towards the end of the piece. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs>
Nation, thank you so much. Well, and of course, I'm happy to take requests tonight. Uh, I don't want to play nothing but uh, piano solos, which may not be very familiar to you. So, oh, Michael, yeah, I, I know you like meditation. Thank you very much. Boy, I don't feel so bad accepting tips tonight since the internet seems to be working. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, and you can also use Zelly. That's, that's Barbara Hospital, everybody. One of the uh, uh, sheet music dealers that has helped me a lot in my career. Uh, I can, yeah, I, I think you have to have my phone number to use Zelly. I'm not too sure about that. If you email me privately, I suppose I can give it to you. Oh, yeah, I figured I would get requests for Kitten on the Keys tonight. We've got quite a few people uh, watching. Maybe I ought to just get it out of the way right now. Uh, it's not a half bad idea. Oh, good. Hey, I've got three people on Twitch. This is terrific. <laughs> well, I've got a request for Kitten on the Keys. So let's enter the world of Edward Elzir Confrey otherwise known as Zez Confrey. Here is his great hit from 1921, Kitten on the Keys, with a few licks from various recordings and piano rolls that I've picked up over the years. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mikey's. Thank you so much, folks. You know, I have never played Dizzy Fingers in my life. I should have known I'd get requests for that tonight. I'm afraid I don't know it. There are some pieces that are wonderful pieces of music, but I have, you know, I have a limited amount of time to pick which pieces I really want to learn and practice, and there are some which I think are so often played by other, other people, I, I do myself a favor by learning something else. And one of those is Dizzy Fingers, another example is uh, Scott Joplin's Bethina, particularly at the Ragtime Festivals where I have performed for years. Uh, William Bolcom's Graceful Ghost, beautiful pieces, but I've never really had the desire to spend a bunch of time on them because I've already heard them uh, dozens and dozens of, of times over the years at various performances. Um, so that's my excuse regarding Dizzy Fingers. I, I would like to play for you tonight a couple of pieces of music by the King of Novelty Piano in Great Britain. And his name is Billy Merrill. Uh, if you're British, you can say it really fast and it sounds better. Merrill, Merrill, something like that. And uh, I never learned much of his music when I was younger as a teenager, and I think it, it, part of that is because it's so darn hard to play. But I've got three of his pieces under my fingers right now that I know by heart. Let me start out with playing two of them. I might save the last one for later in the show. Now, this is, this is his biggest hit, and here's an original copy of it, the original British edition of Marigold from 1925. This you might call the kitten on the keys of England. And there's the cover artwork. Marigold, a syncopated impression for piano by Billy Merrill. so much. Well, I'm getting some uh, interesting requests here. Uh, you know, I might do, yes sir, that's my baby for you in a minute, uh, just because I, I want to do a couple of familiar songs along with the piano solos. But uh, next, let's do, this was the second, or actually, no, this was probably the first Billy Merrill piece I learned. I, I just fell in love with it. It's, it's a really 
exciting piece that has a lot of oriental harmonies in it and <laughs> I was joking with a friend of mine he said I guess Billy just got tired of playing the you know the little children's piece called chopsticks and so he wrote his own piece called chopsticks and believe me this one is a lot better so uh, here oh I, uh, Gustavo I can't believe you haven't heard Marigold before uh, it's yeah it, you know it's not a remarkable title but it's a beautiful piece beautiful melody uh, next oh and I have the original copy right here on the piano we're gonna do chopsticks by Billy Merrill here is the original British edition of this piece from 1927 I imagine this is a pretty rare one uh, there's a couple of his pieces I still don't have uh, anyway so we'll put it on the front of the piano here Chopsticks, another syncopated impression for the piano. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's not an easy piece. Like I said, uh, the, the Billy Merrill piano solos are extremely difficult, which is one reason I've never played them. But they're very melodic and clever, and the more I listen to his music, the more I love it. Uh, I always liked it. Oh, we have someone listening from Sydney, Australia. How wonderful. I do uh, plan to play uh, an Australian piece later in the program, if you stick around. Oh boy, got a hundred people watching on YouTube, 43 on Facebook, and well, two on, uh, <laughs> two on uh, Twitch, that's better than nothing. Appreciate it. Oh, Vincent's listening. Glad you could tune in tonight since it's uh, uh, novelty piano night that Vincent Johnson uh, is is like me. He loves novelty piano. In fact, I heard the historian David Jason say this once, and I agree with him. Of all the subgenres of early American music, ragtime and early jazz, I love the novelty piano solos the most. I think uh, it's it's very happy, and it, yet it's challenging music. Since Halloween is coming up, let's do a. Uh, Zez Confrey piece, which is a little bit spooky. We'll do something different now. And uh, this was kind of a minor hit for Confrey in the early 1930s, 32. And it was used in a, in a cartoon called Balloon Land, where the people of the balloon world were attacked by the Pincushion Man. This is a really cute cartoon from the 30s, but, uh, made by Ube Iwerks, who was one of 
of iWorks. I don't know how you say his name. He was one of Walt Disney's early partners. And uh, so here is Buffoon by Zest Comfrey. <laughs> This goes out to, to Nick Manning, who I just met for the first time at the Central Pennsylvania Ragtime Festival. Uh, he's asking about this piano. I really do love it. I'm proud of it. It's a 1913 Apollo player piano. Apollo is the player mechanism. The brand of the piano itself is Melville Clark, which was actually owned by QRS, the piano roll company, uh, probably made in Chicago. Uh, again, 1913, uh, my friend Jerry DeBaker is the expert on Apollo player pianos, and uh, that's uh, uh, the, who restored this for me. <laughs> oh, Bob, that sounds like Dave, all right. <laughs> the only reason anyone wrote novelty music was simply to annoy him. That's probably because it was too difficult for him to play the music, Bob. Uh, that's my uh, guess. <laughs> Uh, let's do another country novelty, and I think I had a request on YouTube I should play. Let me double check. Oh, by Jingo, I could do that, yeah. Um, let me see. I'm going to do, well, we're going to do one more country piece next. There are some of the country novelties from the 30s that don't get played as often as, say, Dizzy Fingers or Nickel in the Slot. And I think they're really clever. Uh, this one I first heard on a recording by Jeff Barnhart and Brian Holland a number of years ago. And I have loved it ever since. I still don't have a good uh, copy of the original sheet music from 1936. It's called Audacity. <laughs>
Thanks so much. I've never played poor buttermilk. I love all the uh, confrey pieces, of course. Got a request for Scott Joplin. Uh, the theme for tonight's concert is novelty piano, which is mostly 1920s and 30s style. I do play Scott Joplin's music. I play it so often, I'm probably not going to do that tonight. Um, got, I wanted to try and play a couple of, you know, just popular songs. I got a request for Oh by Jingo, I could do that, or I could do my medley of Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue, and Yes Sir, That's My Baby. Uh, if the person who asked for that is still here, write me in the chat. Who asked me for Oh by Jingo? Let me see. Oh, that's Loretta. You know, I might just play that for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let me play Oh by Jingo. This is a really fun tune. I can make an arrangement of this on the spot. Uh, it was originally introduced in a show, I assume it was on Broadway, called Linger Longer Letty, 1919 or thereabouts. And the star on the cover of the music was a dancer named Charlotte Greenwood. And she became very famous in movies after that for decades. She's in Alice Faye movies. She's in, uh, I think she's in the movie Oklahoma. Uh, so anyway, that's a little bit of the history behind this tune. They also sang it on a really fun episode of I Love Lucy. Oh, by Jingle, oh, by G, G you're the only girl for me. follow this with eeny meeny chili beanie. I wish I knew that song, Judy. <laughs> I, I almost called you this week and I ran out of time. Let's catch up uh, next week. Love seeing... Oh, oh, uh, got uh, Harry, you're talking to Bob Milne there. I'm so flattered that Bob listens to my concerts. He was the first professional piano player that I ever saw in concert, so I sure owe him a lot. Um, let's go back to the novelties here, and let, I want to play at least uh, two more of my favorite confrey novelties for you. And here's an original copy of one of them. Took me a long time to find this, and it wasn't cheap. This is uh, from 1936. Audacity has the same cover artwork. It's exactly the same, except for the title. And uh, this is called The Bird's Carnival. Again, I heard this on a recording of uh, Jeff Barnhart, believe it or not. 
and I've loved it ever since. And it's uh, just one of these cute novelties. I think this is one of the best ones Confrey wrote in the 30s. Well, I, I love them all, but um, this and the next one that I want, want to play for you. <laughs> I'm checking all the streams here just to be sure. I, I, this is, isn't this fantastic? I'm so thrilled to be playing. You know, I had the piano tuned this week, and uh, it just it sounds good, and the Internet's working. Isn't this terrific? I don't see a frozen screen. That was just me uh, leaning over uh, to the computer to check things. No, I think, uh, to, this is to Stephen here, I think my internet problems are behind me. Knock on wood. The Birds Carnival. <laughs> so much. Let's go right into the next country piece. I use this as the title, the title song for one of my CDs, which is still available by the way. You can get all my CDs on my, my website. And it's called Sunshine from the Fingers. Uh, we're moving up one year, 1937. One of the more obscure country pieces, but uh, I first heard this on one of the Johnny Maddox Player Piano Roll albums. And I love it. It's, it's more upbeat and kind of simple. Uh, the Confrey novelties, when you get into the 30s, they're a little more complex and uh, moody in some, in some instances. But this was fun. Sunshine from the Fingers. <laughs>
sunshine from the fingers. Thanks, everybody. I don't have an original copy of that one either. Um, I think it was published, but it really didn't have any artwork on the cover. Uh, at least that's what I'm guessing from the Xerox copy that I have. Yeah, Vincent, if you're still listening, maybe you can tell me for sure. Okay. Let's see. Well, I've got three people on Twitch. Hi to Jackpot Coyote over there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good question. Why that piece ended up on a player piano roll, I have no idea. Uh, just because it's kind of an obscure piece. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's not really a professional copy. It's just music without cover artwork. Isn't that right, Vincent? Uh, I'd sure love to find that. Um, well, let's see. What time is it? Let me do a ballad. I want to play something slow again. And uh, if you were listening, I don't know, it's probably more than a few weeks, maybe about a month ago, I performed. It was in the the animal tune themed concert. I played a novelty piece called um, uh, Putting on the Dog, written by Ted Shapiro. Now, uh, Ted Shapiro was Sophie Tucker's accompanist for decades. In fact, Johnny Maddox told me that he met Ted Shapiro when they were, uh, when he worked with Sophie Tucker. Uh, but uh, he wrote one ballad that was an enormous hit. And I'd like to play it for you now from the late 20s. It was advertised, whether this is true, I don't know. It was advertised as the Prince of Wales' favorite foxtrot. And perhaps some of you will recognize this. If I had you. I had you. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully some of you recognize that. I'm having a lot of fun reading the chat tonight because I've got more people than I've had for the last few weeks and I'm trying to switch back and forth between the various uh, uh, websites. I'm, I'm using three websites tonight and it seems to be working great. This is fantastic. I, I, I've got another request that I will uh, try and uh, play here for uh, Leo Roth. He's the ragtime kid from the Scott Joplin Festival this summer in Missouri. And 
Uh, he wants to hear New Era Rag. I haven't done any classic rags tonight. I really wasn't planning on it, but this one, uh, I think this fits in just fine. And uh, this was written late in the period, 1919. The title is obvious because jazz was already taking over by that point. It's written by James Scott, who's from Carthage, Missouri. It's the New Era Rag. some requests tonight. If you are enjoying the music, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo, just like you would do in person. Uh, the information is in the postings, and if you don't trust PayPal, which I understand, um, I have a P.O. box on my website for checks. And, you know, while I'm thinking about it, I want to mention uh, something. I posted this on Facebook but for those that may not have Facebook, I want to uh, talk about this. I just discovered, thanks to Michael Dietz, who's one of the regular listeners here, that 500 copies of my two CD set, An Evening in the Diamond Bell Saloon, were completely defective. Um, the CD stampers were bad. It's a two CD set and they were bad on both discs. Um, I listened to a copy from every single box, and they were all bad. So I think I've been selling those since about June. And if you received one of the defective copies, just send me a private email with your address, and I'll be happy to send you one of the new copies. I now have them in my possession so I can correct the problem. Thankfully, the CD plant you know, was happy to um, redo them at no charge because it, it was their mistake. Um, Oh, I, I saw some discussion here of Scott Bradley, who's the leader of uh, the, the band um, Postmodern Jukebox. They take modern pop, pop hits and play them in a vintage style. I can't believe I'd be getting more views than him. You know, he's much more commercial than I am, in a sense. 
but if you've never heard him, look him up. He's very interesting. And my friend Kylan, I know, is listening tonight on Twitch, who is one of the pianists with uh, uh, the Postmodern Jude Box, PMJ for short. Uh, he has toured the world with them. I don't know how long it's been since you played with them, but um, hey, we've got a few people on, on Twitch now. That's, that's kind of fun. Now, uh, back to the novelty piano pieces, and I'm going to play you one that I've been working on for, for quite some time. Uh, <laughs> I said quite some time. <sighs> Sometimes I'm tired or distracted when I'm doing my virtual concerts. Sorry, folks. Uh, I only learned this a few weeks ago for the concert that was screwed up by my internet issues. And so uh, I have worked hard on it for the last few weeks. It's another Billy Merrill piano solo. This one comes from the late 1930s, I believe. And I've wanted to learn this for years. I finally sat down and did it. It was very difficult to play. It's, quite, it's like 10 or 12 pages. Uh, and those of you who know me, you'll understand why I really wanted to play this one. It's called Railroad Rhythm. I mean, you can even hear the men in the track gang 
working with their hammers. I mean, it's very descriptive. <sighs> yeah, uh, Roger Gustafson, he's asking, I'm not sure I get novelty piano. Uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying the music. Take me out to the ball game. No, that doesn't qualify, I'm afraid. Uh, novelty piano is a specific type of piano music that was very popular in the 20s and 30s. It actually continued and sort of morphed into other styles in the 40s and 50s. And uh, it, it uses certain harmonies, you know, that's, that's part of what makes it unique. A lot of fourths and fifths and, and augmented chords. Some of these composers were slightly influenced by uh, people like Debussy, the French Impressionists. Dana Suisse is an example, although her music is almost more like 20th century classical than novelty piano. It sort of grew out of novelty. Um, their very earliest novelties are a lot like rags, and some of them were called novelty rags, but more often than not, the term rag was not included. Uh, hopefully that makes sense and you're enjoying the tunes. Now, uh, let, me, let me tell you about one of the other pianists in this style. She was very popular during her own time, Pauline Alpert. And here's an original copy of her theme song, which she composed herself. It's called Dream of a Doll. Uh, she was nicknamed the Whirlwind Pianist uh, because she was extremely virtuoso. I really enjoy playing these types of pieces because it allows me to use more of the classical training that uh, I studied for years, more so than songs like um, Take Me Out to the Ball Game or Alexander's Ragtime Band, uh, things like that. This is called Dream of a Doll from 1934.
Thank you so much. Yeah, these novelty piano pieces are challenging, but I hope you're you're really liking uh, liking them. They're they're melodic and clever and fun. <laughs> uh, Nick Taylor is watching from Colorado Springs. Uh, it was nice chatting with you yesterday. Uh, he's he was one of the ragtime festival performers uh, that sort of toured the circuit in the 1990s. I caught the tail end of that. I think that was really the heyday for ragtime festivals. We had an interesting discussion about that. And uh, he goes by a pseudonym on Facebook, as does Vincent Johnson. That's too funny. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Dave, if you'll forgive me, I think I'll save Desecration Rag for another night. Uh, I might have opened the, my last novelty piano concert with that because Felix Starnt is one of the first examples of this style of, of composing. Nola is an even better example, but anyhow, um, is the fellow from Australia still watching? Let me know. I think that was on YouTube. I think it was YouTube. You know what? I can't remember. That's embarrassing. Sorry. I should stop going to the computer so often. I know that. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and play this piece regardless because I know I do have friends and fans over there. Uh, this is a novelty piano solo from late in the period, and uh, this is 1943. And I found the original sheet music for this uh, shortly after arriving in Australia for my tour. And I loved it so much that by the end of the tour, I was performing it in all the concerts. This was composed by a pianist named Sefton Daly, who is essentially the, the closest thing I had in Australia to Billy Merrill one of the most popular pianists of the 20s and 30s. Um, Daly uh, probably didn't arrive on the scene until the 30s in Australia. I think he was born in New Zealand, and he wrote three or four pieces which would be considered novelty. Again, it's a style that's hard to describe. Uh, it's, it's, it's really the popular piano style of those decades, uh, not the jazz that the African-American musicians played as much. And this piece is called color scheme. So I hope you love it as much as I do.
so much. Color scheme. I did a, a recording of some Australian ragtime and novelty pieces, uh, and I did not release it on CD. I did digital downloads only. You can get it on my website, and it includes all three of the novelties by Sefton Daly. Color scheme, serenade to a snake, which is fantastic, and brief candles. Uh, he was uh, must have been fairly known in his own time, at least in Sydney, Australia. He was a, apparently a personal friend of both uh, Cole Porter. No, sorry, it was Noel Coward and was it Cole Porter as well? Might have been, anyhow. Um, he's, he was a similar figure in Australia. I don't know that he wrote many pop songs, but uh, I, I see I'm getting some requests for Tom Breyer tonight. There's quite a few of them. Um, I'm afraid I've never played just Peachy. I don't know it by heart, so that would be difficult for me to do. And the other Briar pieces also require a fair bit of practice, so I, I might, uh, I don't know, back away from that tonight. I'm very sorry. I know a lot of you just love Tom Briar's music, and I do play, play it quite often. Um, let me check, let me check all the websites. Just bear with me for a moment here, folks. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead with what I have planned here on the program, and uh, I'd like to play for you another late period novelty. As I said, uh, the novelty style just developed into other things, just like Ragtime did, and uh, popular piano music in the 1940s uh, was, was similar. And I had the good fortune to befriend a man that was just remarkable. His name was Irving Fields. He used to be a very famous pianist. He played uh, in New York for decades. He played in Las Vegas, all the swanky nightclubs and hotels, and he played on cruise ships, and he went to the Eastman School of Music in the 1930s. He was really a virtuoso and was a prolific songwriter as well. Uh, he was one of the old Jewish songwriters in New York that worked in the Brill Building and uh, Irving lived to be 101 years old. I was so lucky. We were pen pals, and I got to meet him in person a number of times. And uh, he wrote novelty piano solos, actually starting in the late 30s. And I'd like to play for you what I believe is the best of all of them. And this is uh, called, well, it was published under two names. And original publication was slightly fantastic. And then it was changed. Uh, the sheet music and the record, uh, uh, and it was done as um, uh, Puppet's Holiday. Both titles are fitting, you know, it's just like a novelty out of the 20s, but it dates from 1947. So here is Slightly Fantastic, a.k.a. Puppet's Holiday, Irving Fields. <laughs>
and that's slightly fantastic. Puppets Holiday. Thank you, everybody. Um, well, I see, uh, I see a request here that I would like to play for you. Uh, Carl and Amy from Seattle want to hear one of my own pieces. Uh, it's not very humble of me, but I'm going to play it anyway. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I started dabbling uh, in composing not long after I started playing the piano. One of my letters from Irving Fields, he said, well, I became a composer because I was bored practicing scales, scales as a kid, excuse me. And uh, it's, it's similar with me. Uh, the first one that I wrote that I think was really uh, good enough to continue performing it is a novelty piano solo. I wrote this when I was about 15, I think. And I named it for the little town in Texas where my grandfather was born. It's an unusual name, a little town in West Texas of about uh, 120 people, something like that. Uh, the story goes that my grandfather and his brothers and sisters were born in a log cabin built by Davy Crockett. So years later, they found in the mortar of the cabin, D. Crockett, 1836. And this was on the Duprang Ranch in the little town of Novice, Texas. So here is the Novice Novelty by me. See what you think of. Thanks, everybody. I, uh, uh, like I say, I wrote that myself, I, and I even have sheet music available for, uh, you know, there's about three halfway decent rags that I've written. You can get those on my website. And I should have time to do this tomorrow. I'm going to finally release my, the sheet music for my arrangement of the Arthur Marshall rag that was discovered on Traber Tishner's Reel to Reel tape. It's uh, called the Pea Picker. I have physical copies in my hands. I just need to list that for sale on my website. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Let me play uh, my newest composition for you, which um, I've had this written down as well. And I wrote it with a pianist from New York named Andrew Sachs. And um, he wrote the first part. I wrote the second two parts. See what you think of this one. It's called Finger Winks. Also very much novelty piano in style. Finger Winks.
you very much. Finger winks. Yeah. I threw in an off-key ending there on purpose. Well, uh, if there's any last-minute requests, send them in now. We're drawing towards the end of the program. I usually quit about quarter till. And what many of you may not know is that after having played my tour of Pennsylvania and Maine, I got stuck at the airport in Dallas on the way home, which was a lot of fun. I'm joking. And uh, just barely made it back in time Monday night to play at the Diamond Bell in Durango. I am currently playing the piano seven days a week. So, I, you know what, I, I'm kind of looking forward to just uh, relaxing for the rest of the evening tonight. But uh, let's see. Oh dear, we've got spam on YouTube again. Sorry about that. <sighs> yeah, no, I'm sorry, Gustavo. I have not practiced spasmodic. I better not play that without, without practicing it. I really shouldn't. Good night, Bob. Nice, always nice to see you. That's Bob Milne. Oh, I see a request here that I might just play for you. I've, I've got time. It's not quarter till yet. And so uh, I want to play a ballad to, just to create variety. And uh, this is a beautiful song written in 1927 by Carol Gibbons who became a very famous band leader in England, and it was recorded by Gene Austin, the famous singer who also uh, had the hit record on My Blue Heaven. In fact, Gene Austin published this song, so he must have been involved with, uh, I don't know, the idea behind it at least. And uh, so this is A Garden in the Rain, requested by Nick Taylor. Garden 
in the rain. Thank you, folks. Well, I've saved one piece to close with tonight that I bet you'll enjoy. Uh, it's one of the most difficult novelty piano solos ever written. Really, it's the most difficult piece, I think, um, in the ragtime vein whatsoever. And it was written by Arthur Shutt, a virtuoso 1920s novelty pianist who made a lot of uh, records with jazz bands as well. Unfortunately, he never recorded this particular piece. It was composed in 1925, I believe. Frankly, I think it's more difficult than uh, the modern uh, piece uh, written by Robin Frost, Space Shuffle. Uh, this is called Bluein' the Black Key. Thank you so much, folks. Well, I really hope you all enjoyed this. I sure had fun. It was wonderful to get to play for you again with an in-tune piano and no internet problems. Uh, if you can send in a virtual tip, I sure appreciate that. If not, no worries. And I will be back next weekend, same time, same place, on Sunday night. Looks like the streaming went well, so I might even include Twitch. Thanks for, for watching on there. I'm not sure what my theme for next week's concert will be, but uh, I can guarantee you we'll have a lot of fun. So please join me then. Good night for now, folks. Thanks again.